Hi, this is Chris Froome, and today I'm going to be reviewing my Factor Ostro Van. Disc brakes. I'm not 100% sold on them yet myself. Um, I've been using them for the last last couple months. Performance-wise, they're great. I mean, always always stop when I need to stop. Dry, wet, they work. They do the job. They do what they're meant to do. The downsides to disc brakes, the constant rubbing, the potential for mechanicals, the overheating, the discs becoming a bit warped when, when you're on a descent for longer than sort of five, 10 minutes of constant braking. Personally, I just don't think the technology is quite where it needs to be yet for road cycling. I think that the distance between the, the disc and the rotors is still just too narrow. So you're going to get that rubbing, you're going to get one piston that fires more than another, you're going to, you're going to get these little issues. I don't think the pistons quite retract quite the way they're meant to be all the time. Quite often it will work on the stand, work uh, when, a, when, when the mechanic sorts it out, but then once you get onto the road, it's, it's a different story. I accept that's the, the direction the industry wants to go. We as bike riders are going to have to adapt, learn to, learn to use them, and I think if you're not on disc brakes already, it's only a matter of time until you're, you're made obsolete in a way and forced onto them. So as you've just seen, Chris Froome has actually given an honest review of his bike. And this is probably one of the only times you've ever seen a professional bike rider not praising their bike in every single way. Now, I think it's it's very rare that this happens. And I'm very happy that Chris Froome, and I think a lot of people are, that they actually, he has just said, you know, there are some issues, uh, which is which is good. Obviously, most riders, I'd say 99% of riders could never say that because they would get their contract far, like written up or they'd have to delete it because Chris Room is Chris Room. Uh, he can do it. So obviously, we'll talk about the disc brakes first. So he has a number of issues with disc brakes. So number one issue was, I think, just the rubbing. He said the tolerances are too narrow, et cetera, et cetera. Um, which again, I think a lot of people have said you can, when pros ride past and races, you can hear the ding, 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 um, of the risk of the disc brakes rowing. And I guess that just must be really annoying. Like if you're a pro, you train full time, you know, you do everything to try and win and then your bike's dinging. I mean, that is annoying. Uh, and then also the other thing is like he was saying the overheating pads, which I guess I didn't heard as much to be honest, that it was an issue that like the actual rotors heated up and then started to like change shape. Uh, but obviously Apparently that is the case. Um, but I think in general, though, he basically says, like, the disc brakes are, are okay, but they're not perfect for racing, which is obviously what he does. And he doesn't, I don't think he doesn't actually say there's any advantage. He's just like, yeah, they're not, they're, like, a bit bad. But he's not like, oh, they have great stopping power in the wet and dry, which all, like, they are way better. He just says, yeah, they work in the wet and dry. I guess rim brakes sort of do as well. So I thought that was quite interesting that he didn't really, it wasn't like a huge like, oh yeah, they're really good, but there's just a couple teething issues. It was like, nah, what's the what's the point? So I think that's pretty interesting. Uh, and then towards the end when he says that, oh yeah, like you are going to have to have a, rim a disc brake bike eventually. And I think that's one of the interesting things is like, why is that? And obviously the reason I think most disc brake, mo the reason there's a push for disc brakes is because carbon rims are just not really very good. Like the design of a carbon rim is like just copy from aluminium, which obviously is fine for aluminium because like it doesn't, like when it heats up, it dissipates it really quickly while carbon just doesn't. So then it heats up and just heats up and heats up and keeps the temperature and obviously, you know, exploding carbon rims, etc., inner tubes, blah, blah, things like that. So obviously that's the main reason I think they're going for disc brakes. Like some people say, oh no, it's, you know, they just want to sell you a new bike. It's like, yeah, yeah, but they could do that in about a million other ways. But I think disc brakes like that is a genuine issue is that when people make wheels, they know, like if you're 90 kilos and you buy some like 30 mil rims and you ride them down a 10% descent holding your brakes, they are going to explode. And like, you can't really sell a product like that. So I think that's probably the main reason. But anyway, I thought it was very, very interesting that Chris Room did say rim brakes, well, he didn't say rim brakes are better, but he definitely did say disc brakes aren't good. And I think most people who are amateurs who race or any amateur who's like relatively keen knows that like disc brakes I have massive issues like I can understand them like if you lived in a horrible kind of climate with well the UK is quite horrible but like really bad descents and all the rest of it, I can get having disc brakes but like the faff for the average person if you're not going to go to the bike shop the whole time is just too much and I think Chris Room has shown that by also saying like even when the mechanics set up it still doesn't work 
perfectly, which you're just like, okay, like, really? Uh, but anyway, I wonder what, what that will actually change. Like, will disc brakes, you know, will Shimano in the next Dura Race disc brakes be like, oh, yeah, we're going to change it slightly? Because for me, I don't really understand why disc brakes rub because you think eventually it's not like a, it's not like a wheel which is going to go out of true. So surely as long as it doesn't change shape, which it shouldn't do because it's made out of a metal, which is literally the only job is for it to not change shape. Then if you get lined the pistons up, and threw Axel in. I just don't understand how it changes, but obviously, you know, he was going on about all the issues with the pistons not coming back and stuff like that, but you're like, that shouldn't be very hard to fix. Like, okay, maybe mo you like motorbikes obviously have disc brakes. I mean, maybe it doesn't matter as much, the rubbing, but like surely like there's, maybe it's just a weight issue. I don't know, but it seems like something that could be very easily fixed. But I think the other thing is just like the whole hydraulic stuff is just heavy. So his bike was seven kilos and had 30 mil rims um, on it. And you're like, that is, that's quite heavy. When you think it has Dura Ace Di2, okay, not the lightest, lightest loose group set, but still pretty light. You know, integrated bar stem, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and it still weighs like seven kilos, and you're just like, but it's got thirty mil wheels on it. Like that is a chunky, chunky board bike. Like back in the day, obviously, like you know, even aero bikes with rim brakes were still hitting six point seven or whatever. Like the original Canyon Aero, like that was light as. But anyway, that is how it is. And then the to do one downside. Handlebars are a little bit flexible, but um, I hear from the guys over at Factor that they're working on those. Looking forward to racing this for the first time. Hopefully that's gonna be over in uh, UAE, um, in Dubai, in a couple of weeks time. Next thing you mentioned was obviously the handlebars, which again, I thought was interesting. Cause like, why did he mention the flexi handlebars? Like, I just don't really get it. Like I understand disc brakes cause it's a huge change, but like the handlebars, it's like, you just don't need to mention that. Like, why would you trash your bike? I don't really get it, but he's Chris Froome. So maybe he's just like, an honest bloke and just says the truth, uh, which I think is, yeah, fair enough. Um, but anyway, so it was pretty interesting to hear that apparently, in fact, bars aren't stiff enough either, which you think for Chris Froome, like, I don't know, I mean, he's not the biggest guy, so you're like, maybe they are actually quite bad. I don't know. But anyway, I thought overall, super interesting video, very happy that Chris Froome decided to do this, and I'd like to see more people do it, but it just is not going to happen. Like, let's be honest, like, if you're a bike brand, why would you be like, yeah, I want my best athlete who is paying like three mil a year to trash my bike? Lovely. Um, but I also think the media needs to like chill out a bit because it didn't say he hated them. It just said there were some issues. And I think that's the thing is like, obviously my video is going to be very clickbait because it is what it is. But I think like, you know, it shouldn't be like, oh, this is some horrendous thing. It's like, nah, you just honestly said like, they're good, but there's some issues, which is like, fair enough. Um, but yeah, like I can't imagine a smaller team like Sunweb, like if they, if they, they'll never allow their riders to trash their brand because they're so dependent on sponsors and things like that. But Chris Chris Froome is Chris Froome. You know, this video alone, like everyone's like, oh, fair enough, Factor. Like he does actually praise Factor qu quite a lot, the Ostro. So maybe people will be like, oh yeah, I'll buy one of his. I mean, like in a couple of years, everyone will forget what he says anyway, and I'll probably sell more bikes than what this video knocked off. But I think, yeah, it's interesting. And the other question is, will rim brakes ever come back? Like you saw threaded bottom brackets go away. Um, because, well, so like thread bottom brackets happened because they're a better solution and the bike industry couldn't do it. But then they actually went back to threaded again after going to press fit. Sorry, I explained that very badly, but you know what I mean? But will the same happen now? Like, will the, everyone go to disc brakes be like, oh no, we actually can't do disc brakes properly on the road, which I think Chris Room has highlighted. And then they'll be like, oh, these, these things called rim brakes are pretty good. And everyone will go back then. I don't know. I mean, everyone says, no, it's never going to happen. We're all going disc. But then the bike industry does like a U-turn here or there. So it'll be interesting to see. Thank you for watching. Hope you did enjoy this video. Got any comments, leave them below. And uh, see you in the next one.